In this video, I will analyze the new and apparently improved APA system 5.0 of the Mavic 3 for obstacle detection and avoidance to see how well the omnidirectional sensor of this model work. I will also test this new smart return to home functionality. I will try very hard to crash this drone. Let's see if I will manage it. One of the very few weak points of the DJI R2S is the lack of lateral obstacle sensors, which makes it unsuitable for safely tracking action. During a test similar to the ones I will do in this video, I had several small crashes when tracking myself in parallel mode due to the lack of lateral sensors. Also, the R2S has a hard time detecting fine tree branches and electric lines. As some of you know, I am affiliated with DJI, so you will find all the info about these drones in the description below, as well as info and pricing about other gear I use. If you intend to buy any of these items and go through the links below, I learn a tiny commission that really helps the channel. Action tracking and obstacle avoidance is the only area where DJI drones of the Mavic line are clearly behind a competitor, the Skydio 2, a drone that is specialized in tracking, even though it's clearly inferior to the DJI models in all other departments. So, let's see if DJI has done some catching up. Let's have a look at the sensors of the Mavic 3. There is a couple at the top facing upwards, a couple at the front and at the back facing slightly outwards, and a couple at the bottom facing down. So, like in the R2S, no sensors at the sides. But the two at the front and the back are claimed to have a wide-angle vision and therefore should be able to cover obstacles at the side. The settings for obstacle avoidance are the same as in the R2S. In the safety tab, we can choose three different actions. When in off, the obstacles will not be detected and avoided. If brake is selected, the aircraft will stop before an obstacle and over on place. If we choose bypass, the drone will try to find the best way around the obstacle, if possible. If the option right below display radar map is turned on, we will see on our mobile device a map of the obstacles around the aircraft. So I head up to mighty Mount Etna, the perfect place for this kind of test. Plenty of wooded areas and lava rock formation, hardly anybody around. At this time of the year, some great autumn colors are very well reproduced by the excellent normal mode of the Mavic 3, the Hasselblad Natural Color Solution. So, I start by choosing Break in the Obstacle Avoidance action in the Safety tab. I also make sure that Display Radar Map is on. It will give us some clues on how APAS reacts to nearby obstacles. Then, in the Camera tab, I choose Normal Color Mode to better see what happens, as the log is way too flat. After takeoff, we can see on our mobile device this ellipse showing obstacles in red when they are detected and the distance to obstacles below and above. I start by heading towards these three trunks, but for the Mavic 3 such a large obstacle is a piece of cake, and it stops before it. Then I try to crash sideways towards the same tree, but again it stops before. Let's try something more difficult. I head towards the area between two trees with plenty of tiny branches everywhere, a situation that the R2S could not handle very well. The drone advances until it stops just before a tiny branch. It is now surrounded by branches and leaves, but I try to force my way through by going forward, backward, sideways, above and below. I was sure it would crash during this maneuver but somehow it kept stopping just before hitting even the tiniest obstacle. 
amazing. As you can see, I'm living very dangerously, so a hit of the like button would be highly appreciated. Now let's move to this wider area. Let's see if I finally manage to crush this drone on these bushes with a very wiry structure, really hard to detect. I go at full speed against it. Then I try my luck sideways. Then I go back towards it. I even try several times to descend toward the tiny tree, but every time the aircraft stops just before hitting it. Not an easy task to crash this drone. Let's see if I have more luck crushing this drone using the bypass mode. Here I let it fly low in this path in the wood surrounded by trees. I'm simply pushing the stick forward and it finds its way avoiding obstacles. But at this point it avoids the tree by going to the left instead of following the path. I guess that if it was tracking a person or a bicycle, it would have a target and remain in the desired direction. In this situation I can help it by slightly pushing the stick to the right to make it follow the path. Notice how it advanced, avoiding all obstacles, even the smallest branches. One thing to notice is that when flying in an area surrounded by obstacles, like this path on a forest, the speed is not as high as in wide open environment. The closer the obstacle, the slower the speed. Notice how it manages here to find its way above or below tiny branches. I keep simply pushing the stick forward and let it find its way around the tiniest space. I'm doing my best, but it seems impossible to crush this thing. In this wider area I launch the bird against this block of lava rock, but it easily moves above to avoid it. Then I fly in a circular path randomly around some trees, but once again it manages to avoid every single one with ease. I started to lose hope of crushing this drone, but then I thought, let's see what happens in zoom mode. I had read in some forums that the APA system does not work with zoom functions, especially when engaging the telephoto lens at the 7x zoom factor. Let's give it a try. By clicking on the binocular icon I engage the zoom, then I type once on the icon below to go to the 2 times digital zoom. The ellipse for obstacle detection is still there and the drone keeps avoiding obstacles going forward, backwards, sideways. So I type twice on the zoom level icon to get to 7 times and engage the telephoto lens. As you can see, even with a second lens, the APAS system seems to work perfectly well. And this is excellent news, as it means that once active track will be available, it should be possible to track targets very far away. Anyway, I try my best to crash this drone, but I didn't manage even to damage a propeller. It's not fair. How about you? Have you had any crashes yet? Let us know your experience in the comments. In previous models of the Mavic line, we had to specify the desired height for return to home. It should be high enough to avoid all possible surrounding obstacles. The aircraft would fly to that eye, then go towards the home point to land. Mavic 3 has a new intelligent return to home system. Let's see how it works. I have placed the drone in an area surrounded by thick trees. When I tap on the return to home button, it finds a way around the trees. Then it heads towards the home point direction, remaining at very low level, and once it reaches the point, it starts landing. The whole maneuver is much faster than before. Click on this link to watch my review of the footage quality of the Mavic 3. 
I will also add a link to my analysis of AttiTrack once this functionality will be available. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video.